It was the mission of the lowly hobbit Frodo Baggins to bring the One Ring to Mordor so that it could be unmade in the eternal fires of Mount Doom. This was the plan of the Council of Elrond, and a hopeless one at that. For it was thought that through the mere power of a hobbit, the destruction of the ring would be impossible to accomplish. Was it despair? Was it folly to hope that this journey might ultimately succeed? Or was it wisdom, as Gandalf claimed? Gandalf, who had fallen into the depths of khazad lost to the Fellowship when they finally reached Lothlorien. That was what filled the heart and mind of Frodo too, when he met Lady Galadriel, the mightiest elf in all of Middle-earth. She seemed the shining solution to his immense burden, a ring-bearer, beautiful and powerful, imbued with an inner power so great, she might defy the power of the One Ring. So Frodo offered it to her, and Lady Galadriel declined. But why, and what would have happened if she had decided differently? Welcome, Meldonyar. I'm happy to see so many new faces here. I hope to see more of you next time, when we will look at the fall of Saruman, and why he betrayed his brethren and turned to evil. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be reminded when the next chapter starts. But this week we ask ourselves, what if the Lady Galadriel had accepted the One Ring? You are wise and fearless and fair, Lady Galadriel, said Frodo. I will give you the One Ring if you ask for it. It is too great a matter for me. Galadriel laughed with a sudden clear laugh. Wise the Lady Galadriel may be, she said, yet here she has met her match in courtesy. Gently are you revenged for my testing of your heart at our first meeting. You begin to see with a clear eye. I do not deny that my heart has greatly desired to ask what you offer. For many long years I had pondered what I might do should the great ring come into my hands, and behold, it was brought within my grasp. The evil that was devised long ago works on in many ways, whether Sauron himself stands or falls. Would not that have been a noble deed to set to the credit of his ring if I had taken it by force or fear from my guest? And now at last it comes. You will give me the ring freely. In place of the Dark Lord you will set up a queen. And I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night, fair as the sea and the sun and the snow upon the mountain. Dreadful as the storm and the lightning, stronger than the foundations of the earth, all shall love me and despair. She lifted up her hand, and from the ring that she wore, there issued a great light that illuminated her alone and left all else dark. The one ring had been lost for centuries. But one thing was always clear to the sages of Middle-earth. Eventually, the ring would come back again, and when it would, they would have to be prepared. For a long time, the White Council had debated what was to be done when that day would dawn. Both Elrond and Galadriel, the bearers of the Elven rings Vilja and Nenya, had, of course, considered the possibility of using the One Ring and using it against Sauron. They had studied the ring's abilities and its effects on the wearer, gauged its power and strategized how they would defeat the Dark Lord with his own weapon. 
But when the One Ring did return, they discarded at last those thoughts and resisted the Ring's influence. But what would have happened if Galadriel had acted differently, taking the Ring and using it against Sauron? This is something Tolkien himself vaguely hinted at in his letters. Once Galadriel had declared herself the new Lady of the Ring, her spirit would fight with the will of the One Ring itself. It would be a battle of wills, which, sooner or later, would turn in favour of the ruling Ring. Eventually, be it after years, be it after ages, she would have to lose, and the Ring would come to rule her. But, as long as she could hold her own against it, there would be hope. Hope that she could learn to use the ring and use it effectively. An endeavour that would indeed have taken ages. But then what? Would she have faced Sauron to challenge him to single combat? No. Galadriel's plan was different. With the power of the ring, she would have reigned as she had dreamt of in the many centuries of her youth. Under her leadership, the land of Lothlorien would have risen to become a great elvish power, strong, glorious and fearsome. No one could have stopped her unless Sauron himself had come forth from Baradur to challenge her. Even the Nazgul would have been useless in such a fight as they would have been powerless against Caladriel as ring mistress. Thus, after long years of preparation, the elven mistress would have gathered large armies under her banner until tens of thousands of soldiers were at her command. But that would not have ended their rearmament, for just like Sauron and Saruman too, Galadriel would have fired up the engines of war and would have developed powerful weapons of great destructive might to use against her enemies. She would have descended further and further down this path of deception, of the end that justifies the means, on which her supremely good intentions would have required small sacrifice after small sacrifice, until she herself had done evil in order to suppress evil. From that point on, she would no longer need her elven ring Nenya. She would have given it to a loyal subject, because at that point she would be able to directly control the three elven rings through the power of the ruling ring. Whoever would be the bearers of Narya, Nenya and Vilya at this time, they would become the supreme generals of Galadriel, utterly loyal and obedient, much like the Nazgul, only more powerful. Thus would Galadriel have faced the lands of Mordor, a mighty army of elves, men and dwarves, led by three powerful and utterly devoted generals. The servants of Sauron would not be able to oppose the weapons of war that Galadriel would have devised. And so Galadriel's victory over the Dark Lord would have been all but assured. She herself would have acted from a great distance and left the direct leadership to her generals, whom she would have been able to control and direct using the Master Ring. Galadriel would not have dared a direct confrontation with Sauron, for, though her power was vast, she was but a small light of a candle compared to the raging storm that was the monstrous strength of Sauron. Though mighty beyond any of her elven kin, she was still elven. She would have lost in single combat against the might of the Maya Sauron. And so she would use the power and strength of her minions to overthrow the Dark Lord and banish him from Mordor. In his stead she would now have sat on the Dark Throne and ruled over Middle-earth. 
but her triumph would have been short-lived. I wish you'd take this ring, Sam said to Galadriel in the Fellowship of the Ring. You'd put things to right. You'd stop them digging up the gaffer and turning him adrift. You'd make some folks pay for their dirty work. I would, she said, but that is how it would begin. But it would not stop with that. Alas, we will not speak more of it. In the end, victorious or not, Galadriel would have fallen to the One Ring. She would have been defeated, having lost the eternal battle of wills and would have become a puppet herself. The spirit of the Ring would have ruled over her and preordained all her thoughts, plans and deeds. This is how the story ultimately would have ended. A transformed Middle-earth under the shadow of a new dark empress possibly even worse than Sauron himself, for it would have been evil under the guise of good. Nonetheless, Galadriel, thanks to her immense wisdom, could ultimately foresee how her fate would have been altered had she fallen to the ring. And so she passed her test, remaining Galadriel, and, after the fall of Sauron, she went to the immortal lands of Valinor, to her kin. Thus we conclude this theory and this video. Did the story surprise you? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed it and would like to learn more of the inner workings of Arda, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of the next chapter in the mysteries of westerners and learn how it came to be that Saruman the White, the first of the history, betrayed his brethren and turned to evil. For now, this has been Irjikor Kurubani, and I wish you all Namari Nudonyar.